Dr. Gautam Alagadia is a medical director of Rotunda, the center of human reproduction and world-renowned infertility clinic with four branches in Mumbai. Throughout his career, he has been instrumental in developing new fertility challenges, enhancing protocols, propagating the use of ultrasound in em embryo transfer procedures. He was responsible for Indian first trans-ethical surrogate pregnancy involving Chinese couple baby delivered by a unrelated Indian surrogate mother. He is also a credit to Indian first same-sex couple pregnancy and deliver uh, twins. And he, is, he has organized uh, several international congresses and recently is nominated for Mumbai Top Doc for 12 12 2012 pre-nomination process. Respected chairperson sirs, colleagues and friends, have we written the obituary for conventional IVF with IVF light? About four years ago, I got a chance to visit the Kato Clinic in Japan and they had published a series of over 50,000 natural cycle IVF cases and I saw them working with natural cycles and minimal stimulation and realized that this is the future and this is where the world is going to head including countries that cannot afford IVF without compromising on results. I will take you through the evolution of this process as it began 15 years ago. Initially, when we talked 15 years ago about natural cycle IVF or mini IVF, it was always treated like the poor countryside cousin. Always the success rates were touted as less than 10% clinical pregnancy rates. So in serious units, in busy units, nobody really paid attention. They said, oh, mini IVF, natural IVF always gives pregnancy rates less. This is about 15, 18 years ago, less than 10%. So it was only a handful of units that persisted with this. And then about 10 years ago, people started going on to the mini IVF or minimal stimulation IVF bandwagon. Again, the clinical pregnancy rates maximum in literature that were reported were about 15%. Again, the mainstream units, the big units who do over a thousand cases a year never really paid attention because again, the benchmarks were 40-50% clinical pregnancy rates. It's only in the last five years after the advent of vitrification that all these mainstream protocols really came into mainstream. Today, it's paradoxical that the big units who are doing 8,000, 10,000 cycles are scrambling to learn the techniques of vitrification and minimal stimulation protocols to get pregnancy rates in excess of 50-60%, clinical pregnancy rates in excess of 50-60%. I'll take you through the evolution and where we stand today. I think yesterday with the Mylan Awards, the two young researchers and Goral this morning has given you the embryology part of the embryological aspect of this technique and the procedure. And I'll tell you a little bit about how we have evolved and developed our own procedures for IVF light. The use of controlled ovarian stimulation to obtain multiple eggs has definitely resulted in a compromise. So what are the compromises? It's in terms of the risk of OHSS, expense, we all crib about expense, we all crib about universal access to IVF and one of the stumbling blocks is expense. The gonadotropin costs multiple pregnancies. We are all moving towards one, a single embryo or transferring at the most two embryos into our patients. Wastage or the need of cryopreservation of surplus embryos. The question that Sam asked in the morning, you know, we faced the same question when we used to do slow cryopreservation, you know, 40%, 50% of embryos were lost in the thawing process. Today, we talk of 100% survival and 100% recovery of vitrified oocytes as well as embryos. So things have really changed in the last two years 
and we are not even talking now of 98, 97%. Today, you know, an average lab should, once they are trained in the techniques of cryotech vitrification, should be talking of 100% survival. Incidence of oocyte aneuploidy is artificially raised after stimulation. There are enough papers to tell us that. So 15, 18 years ago, routine IVF was challenged, was challenged by these simpler methodologies. Natural cycle IVF, minimal stimulation IVF, and today I feel that we are talking of a transition, but I feel that transition has already taken place and IVF light is there to stay. This includes minimal stimulation IVF, vitrification, and accumulation of embryos and remote embryo transfer. So let us go first and get a little bit of insight into how natural cycle IVF started being propagated and published in literature. This is a 2008 publication. It's a little crowded slide, but read along with me. It really makes for interesting reading. A Japanese group recently described three successful cases involving patients of advanced age from whom dominant follicles were retrieved during a natural cycle. All patients had failed to bear children through conventional stimulated IVF cycles. In case one, a follicle was retrieved after a GnRH agonist trigger. In cases two and three, pregnancy was achieved via completely natural cycles. One embryo was transferred every 16 cycles. The authors concluded that mature oocyte retrieval followed by natural rather than stimulated IVF might be a potential treatment for patients of advanced stage when stimulated IVF has been repeatedly unsuccessful. Like I told you, when we talked of natural cycle IVF with success rates of less than 10%, they were never accepted by the mainstream clinics. And then in their research to do about 50, 60,000 natural cycles a year in a single clinic, they came across a problem of a premature LH surge. And to counter that, this group from Japan, the Kato group, introduced NSAIDs to postpone the endogenous LH surge. So low dose, post-trigger, NSAIDs, 100 milligram indomethacin every 12 hours were given if they detected an LH surge on the day of trigger. And using that, they could definitely decrease the incidence of premature LH surge. So in this retrospective series, short-term low dose NSAID application positively influenced natural IVF cycles by diminishing the rate of unwanted premature ovulations and increasing the proportion of cycles reaching embryo transfer. Again, this is from Italy. In an analysis of 500 consecutive natural cycles, oocytes were found in 78%, cleaving embryos suitable for transfer in 57%, and a pregnancy rate, again, of less than 10%, 9.8% per cycle, 17.1% for transfer, and 16.7% per patient. Again, these were just few units in Italy, in Quebec, that were doing natural and minimal stimulation cycles. And this was 2007 8 when a lot of these publications came into literature. To understand IVF light, you must have very clear fundamentals of what is minimal stimulation IVF. A minimal stimulation IVF cycle is defined either as a stimulation regimen in which gonadotropins are administered at a lower than usual dose and or for a shorter duration throughout a cycle in which GnRH antagonist is given as co-treatment. A GnRH antagonist is the pillar stone of all minimal stimulation IVF cycles or a stimulation in which oral compounds, example anti-estrogens, are used either alone or in combination with gonadotropins, and again, GnRH antagonists. All minimal stimulation IVF cycles necessarily, whatever combination you use, require minimal amounts of GnRH antagonists to be included in the protocols. So how did 
Carto, uh, what was the Carto protocol for minimal stimulation? So 50 milligram clomiphene citrate is initiated on cycle day three and from cycle day eight, patients receive 150 IU of FSH every other day. This clomiphene is not given for five days. The clomiphene is continued right till the time the oocyte, the follicle reaches a diameter that they want it to. When they expect a mature oocyte, this clomiphene citrate is continued till that time. <coughs> and from cycle day eight, patients receive 150 IU of urinary FSH every other day. When the size of the dominant follicle and the estradiol concentration reach predefined values that you are looking for, a GnRH agonist is administered to induce follicular maturation. Oocytes are retrieved 30 to 35 hours later. In this particular publication in RBM online 2007, they reported 43,433 cycles were initiated. The rates for oocyte retrieval were 83% and embryo cleavage 64% respectively. The mean number of oocytes retrieved was 2.2, and the rates for live births were 11.1% respectively. Again, although their patients had accepted this fully, they were coming, there was no need to do an alternate month cycle. They could do back-to-back -back cycles. It was cheaper on the patient's pocket. The, they had a huge waiting list. The next year, they reported this in 2005-06, and in 2007-08, they had more than 50,000 cycles a year using the same protocol. Ian Kraft then, in 99, as early as 99, reported on using minimal stimulation with antagonist in two different groups of patients, in poor responders and hyper responders and showed that minimal stimulation works very well in both these groups where you could get acceptable pregnancy rates and in hyper-responders you could avoid the risk of OHSs by giving a combination of clomiphene citrate and HMG and antagonist. A group from Japan again extended, so we talked of poor responders, hyper responders, and here was a group, again a large group of patients that were reported from Japan with previous IVF failures. So this became the third group in which minimal stimulation IVF was an indication. So 40 women with no live births after conventional IVF ICSI and subsequent blastocyst transfer with the regular gold standard GnRH long protocol entered the study. The treatment protocol consisted of clomiphene citrate, 100 milligram for five days, and gonadotropin injections daily from day four onwards. Again, antagonist is a pillar stone. Citrolex was started when the leading follicle reached 14. Triggering was done either with HCG or GnRH agonist. And in this protocol also, it was possible to perform blastocyst transfer in 38 patients out of the 40 patients that were recruited. The authors concluded the use of GnRH antagonist in this protocol is most likely you know, and giving good blastocyst and leading to improved pregnancy rates. So you had minimal stimulation being used for poor responders, hyper responders, older women with older age groups that Cato's clinic started doing above the age of 39-40 and, and then there were random people, random groups that were trying to give minimal stimulation even to normal responders and in, in principle the stimulation is as shown that you give clomiphene citrate either for 5 days or if you follow the Japanese protocol take it right till the time the follicle is mature and then from day four, five, either daily HMG or alternate day HMG, you are looking for just two to four follicles. You are looking for just two to three embryos that you get. And almost all the groups from different continents were consistently getting very good quality embryos 
using this protocol. This is from Taiwan in 2008, where again they selected hyper responders, PCOS patients, and using the minimal stimulation protocols were getting excellent, better grade embryos as compared to the conventional long agonist or antagonist protocols. Learning from all this, with the introduction of vitrification, cryotech vitrification, we devised the IVF light protocol. The IVF light protocol requires a reliable and cheap method for vitrification because the negative impact of the clomiphene citrate on the endometrium is there. We never do an embryo transfer in the same cycle in which you do site retrieval. The embryos are vitrified and accumulated and embryo transfers are done at a later date, maybe two months, three months down the line when you have a requisite number of embryos stored with you. At a later date, you can prepare the endometrium like you do for your egg donor recipients and then do the transfer and consistently you will get pregnancy rates like you get for your egg donation patients which are much higher from 50 to 70 percent. So IVF light at Rotunda includes embryo accumulation and vitrification. The analysis, we are reporting this paper, we have sent it for uh, publication, so I cannot give you, show you the same data that has been sent to the journal. I will give you part of the data, analysis of Rotunda results, reporting the frozen thaw cycle outcome after embryo vitrification and accumulation or acuvit in low responders with minimal ovarian stimulation protocol. We had our inclusion criteria, patients less than 44, at least one previous controlled ovarian stimulation cycle with poor response defined as less than four M2 sites. Again, the backbone is the acuvit and the remote transfers that we have inculcated into our standard operating procedures. These are just the very early results uh, from 2011, where we've just taken seven patients, poor responders, mean number of cycles per patient, 3.68, mean number of M2 eggs, mean embryos per patient, 900 IU gonadotropins, and ongoing pregnancy rate, 42.85%. This is with vitrification with a remote embryo transfer. So initially, when we learned from the Japanese, we were sticking only for these poor responders as an indication for IVF light. We then reading world literature and talking to other scientists in the field, we extended these to these other indications, women above the age of 39, 40, women with previous multiple IVF failures, women, and today women who are hyper responders, who have a very high AMH, we don't put them on conventional IVF protocols. We necessarily put them through this minimal stimulation protocol of clomiphene and HMG. So women with previous OHSs, these are the indications. And today in 2013, we have stretched this to all our normal responders. We run, we started India's first budget clinic called Rotunda Blue for the uh, patients who cannot afford regular IVF. And today we have extended this IVF light to normal responders to all patients in whom IVF is done where clomiphene citrate and HMG, and we try to minimize the use of antagonists. Instead of starting antagonists, as described when you have 14, 15 millimeter follicles, we start the antagonist when you are using clomiphene and HMG when the follicle reaches 18, 19 millimeters. Sometimes we give just one injection or sometimes two injections of antagonist in this IVF light protocol. Transfer is never done in the same cycle. You get the embryos vitrified, accumulate the embryos, and then do a pharmacological preparation of the endometrium like you do for a recipient in subsequent months, and then aim for the same high results that you would get otherwise in third-party reproduction when you have a pharmacologically prepared endometrial lining. 
So again, this is just a simple diagram for the beginners on what we do from day one, two, three, we begin clomiphene citrate, 50 or 100 milligrams, right till the time you achieve follicular maturity. From day five, six, you begin HMG, 150 IU on alternate day. And once the follicles reach a mean diameter of, we look at the triple layer, the morphology and the mean diameter, but on average, if the follicle reaches 20, 21 millimeter diameter is when you get an, a better triple layer at that time. So the antagonist is started quite late, 19, 18, 19, 20, generally a single injection of antagonist is enough and then you trigger ovulation using your urinary cheap HCG and then the egg pickup is done 34 hours later and everything is vitrified, all the embryos are vitrified and accumulated and this works, this works really well even for hyper responders if you have, you know, you aim for six, seven, eight eggs but even in hyper responders with this protocol at times you get about 10 to 15 eggs so you just need to do vitrification in that one cycle let the ovaries come back and she then give her estradiol valerate, prepare her endometrium and two months later do the embryo transfer. One of the teams that we followed and we collaborated with and we really brainstormed with, we did the first minimal stimulation IVF conference two years ago in Goa was John Zhang. This paper that he published is really a landmark paper in this series, patients were not denied treatment based on their day 3 FSH value or ovarian reserve or AMH values. This is absolutely contrary to what we read in the journals that if the FSH is more than 15 or the AMH is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, this patient is not going to have her own eggs. Here in this group and after this, he has two more publications where irrespective of the FSH and AMH values, he treats them with clomiphene citrate and with HMG and got acceptable pregnancy rates, 20% for fresh embryo transfers and 41% for cryopreserved embryo transfers. This is very important because this is the group of patients generally whom traditionally we have been pushing very easily for donor egg IVF in countries where donor egg IVF is allowed. And he has taken this very pool of patients and has given us pregnancy rates consistently in excess of 40%. These results strengthen the argument for IVF light. He calls it a mini IVF protocol with vitrification. We have christened it as IVF light. So this is, I believe, here to stay. And to get these high success rates in ART, this is the only way forward. This is not a transition for people who have taken to it earlier, are you know, reaping the benefits and are getting these high pregnancy rates in their routine practices. So in conclusion, IVF light gives pregnancy rates comparable to conventional IVF in patients, in normal responders, in, with patients with normal ovarian reserve. Patient acceptability is wonderful, it's better. You can do back-to-back -back cycles. In a woman whose AMH is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, time is running out for her. You can do back-to-back -back cycles and even if you get one embryo per cycle, we have many such patients where we are accumulating the embryos and giving them a chance of having their own genetic children. IVF light gives pregnancy rates much better than conventional IVF in older patients, patients with previous conventional IVF failures, poor responders, and today hyper responders is also as part of the group. Again, when you look at the developing economies, I'm going to give a talk tomorrow on IVF in developing economies. In cost conscious environments, IVF light is the only type of IVF that is going to be the future. Thank you. Thank you for a very patient.